Good afternoon. I'd like to uh, update the media with regards to homicide 16 for 2012. Uh, the deceased name in this particular investigation is James Massey, M-A-S-S-E-Y. He's a 32-year-old male from Toronto. On Wednesday, the 9th of May, 2012, at approximately 3 a.m., the Toronto Police Service Communications Bureau received the 911 call with regards to the sound of a gunshot coming from Memorial Park, which is in the Chaplin Crescent and Young Street area of the City of Toronto. Uniformed police officers from number 53 division attended the scene. Uh, the uniformed scout car arrived from the south. It drove into the park and arrived on the north side in the area of the children's playground. The deceased was found uh, near the playground, lying on his back, uh, vital signs absent. The first officers performed aggressive CPR on the deceased. Toronto EMS arrived and made a uh, electronic patch linked to Sunnybrook Hospital when the deceased was declared deceased and he was left at the scene. Uh, I can indicate to the media and to the public that this was not a random attack. Uh, the individual in this case, Mr. Massey, was the focus of the, of the attack. Uh, he was the target of this particular uh, homicide. Uh, there is not an individual who's up there uh, randomly going around attacking people in this particular uh, area of the city. Uh, prior to the 911 call, a single angry raised voice could be, hear, could be heard by area residents prior to the sound of that single gunshot. Uh, the argument is described by the witnesses as one-sided. The deceased, from all uh, policing uh, checks and information inquiries, uh, suggests at this point that the deceased was not leading a criminal high-risk lifestyle. The motive for the uh, this offense is not robbery. The deceased clearly had some baggage with the suspect. It was clearly a personal attack. The postmortem was conducted at the office of the chief coroner the, uh, this morning and the cause of death has been determined to be a close-range shotgun blast to the abdomen. The suspect description that was provided by the witnesses that were canvassed during this investigation is as follows. The suspect description is male white, in his late 20s, 5'8 to 5'10 in height. He's unshaven. The suspect has visible facial hair, medium build, is wearing a black or dark hooded sweatshirt, baggy blue jeans, and he was last seen walking southbound from the children's playground in the area where the shooting took place towards LaSalle Boulevard. Uh, the Homicide Squad is making its traditional appeal to members of the community up there to come forward with information. There's a number of uh, witness interviews that are being conducted both yesterday and today and uh, we are receiving a, a great deal of cooperation from the community in this particular area uh, per this investigation, and we hope that it continues. And I've had a conversation with the deceased father this morning. Uh, the family at this point is asking for privacy uh, from the media with regards to the death of their son, but did indicate to me that they do have a, a family spokesperson that at some point, if, if the request was there, would speak to the media on behalf of the family. And I'll take any questions that you might have. Can you tell us a bit about him, what, what, what he was doing there the, from the area? He, he lives in the general vicinity uh, of the shooting. He's a laborer. Uh, he's a long-standing resident of the city. He has family, as I indicated to you. He has a sister. Do they live all together? No, they live separate from each other. Yeah. Kids? Married? No, married. not married. Single. What kind of labor? Uh, just, just a labor, general labor. Was he known to me? He, he was... He was known to us with regards to a very dated single contact that uh, did not lead to a criminal conviction. How long ago was that? Uh, maybe in excess of three years ago. Did it involve drugs? No. no. What, uh, what's the, the baggage? Can you explain that a little bit more? Just, just from the investigation, it would appear that uh, based on the, the narrative, of, which I'll, I won't be disclosing, of the angry voice that's heard, uh, it's clearly that the individual, you know, had some baggage with the deceased person. He was articulating that loud enough for area residents to hear, and then the, sh the shot was fired after that. Is that a love triangle kind of thing? It does not appear to be that. Is it normal for him to win out so late, early? 
Cody Street or get a morning. <laughs> uh, it, it's my understanding that it wouldn't be unusual for him to be out late and out late in that particular park or area of the city. Thank you. Was there any drinking involved uh, prior to? Toxicology tests on the deceased, of course, would be a standard uh, course of practice, and that's ongoing. <coughs> Any other questions? And he, and he, so he walked away, didn't run away. So what does that, what does that in, indicate to you? Well, the witnesses described it as a very, um, you know, aggressive walk. Uh, Carrying a, was it a shotgun you said? Yeah. Well, a shotgun was used. But the witnesses uh, at this point don't indicate uh, that it was seen carrying it. So whether it was sawed off or it had been concealed under clothing, uh, difficult to say. Do we have any description about the vehicle? Yes. <coughs> no vehicle use. It's, uh, he was uh, exiting, the suspect was exiting from the area of the shooting, which is on the north side of the, of the park, towards the south side of the park, to a series of uh, high rise apartment buildings on LaSalle Boulevard. Uh, did it seem like they met each other in the park, or it was? It did. It uh, did was there a meeting? Did it seem like there was a meeting planned, or? Well, it's, I think that's at this point it's impossible to say, but there was definitely a, an exchange or an interaction in the park. It lasted for a number of minutes, so much so that witnesses in the area had an opportunity to go to their window to make observations uh, towards where these angry voices could be heard from. Did he fight back? I, I don't. I don't have any indication. That was anything but one-sided. Hey, what, are, what are the motives you're exploring at this time? Well, it'd be almost too many to mention. Uh, it could be anything at all, and uh, it's only I can describe it as day two of the investigation. So, keeping an open mind, and we're alive to all possibilities. And that area is not a high crime area by any means, is it? Uh, no, I don't believe I've done very many investigations in that particular area. There's uh, numerous expensive homes that are around the park. Um, it's a, it's a high density populated area. There's a, it's a very uh, short distance from Young Street. And uh, I, mean, I have personally been there for very many years. So I don't believe he got off the subway because he lived in the area where he went and walked there from his house? I, I, don't, believe, I don't believe he got off the subway. Okay. Would you describe that a suspect as an aggressive and dangerous person? Well, anybody that could do this is certainly dangerous and we want that individual in custody uh, as quickly as possible for the community safety purpose. But uh, at this point, um, you know, like I say, we're on day two, and I'd be interested in hearing from any additional members of the public with regards to information. And that's part of the reason why this photograph is going out. Is there a homeless element with the park? Homeless? Mm -hmm. not, not that I'm aware of from the division, no. Just a so, couple more questions. Given the neighborhood, uh, as you talked about, that this is not a high crime neighborhood, um, why is it important to sort of stress that this wasn't a targeted attack for this particular neighborhood? That it wasn't? Yeah. It's based on our investigation that it was not, it's not random. It's not just that. By like, no chance. concerns from the neighborhood itself asking about their security? That, that's part of the reason I'm here. I'm here to tell the community in that particular area that they, they should feel safe, that there is an individual running around harming people at random, that clearly uh, the offender and the deceased had some kind of pre existing baggage, and that baggage was meted out in the park on that particular night. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. This concludes today's conference. You'll be able to find the photograph of the victim on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on the Toronto Police website. Thank you for attending.